Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back, it's Ryan Miller checking in with GST's YQMA. Today we hit episode number 43 and we talk about overhyped hamstring recruitment during squats and leg presses. Now I have to say one thing that really annoys me is when people make these Facebook posts and they're talking about, oh man, I squatted 10 sets for 10 reps today, so much volume, my hamstrings are smoked, or I went failure on the leg press five sets in a row, my hamstrings are fried. Now in reality, I always laugh at these posts because it's just not the truth. The truth is that hamstring recruitment during squats and leg pressing is so overblown. The hamstrings don't get fried from squatting, they don't get smoked from leg pressing. At most, they get preheated because they're activated, but they're only activated at about a quarter of quad recruitment. So think about that. There's no way that a person is doing strenuous, stressful damage to their hamstrings during squats or leg pressing. So we really need to put a stop to this overhyping that when you squat, it's one of the king hamstring movements because it's not. Now the reason for this is because when you squat or leg press, you actually bend at the hips and at the knees. And what happens here is for a muscle to really get worked, um, it has to either vastly shorten or lengthen. Now, that doesn't happen when you have a muscle lengthening at the hips when you're bending your hips, and then you have that muscle shortening at the knee when you're bending your knee. And those things both happen simultaneously during a squatting or leg pressing motion. And so what happens is the length of the hamstring muscle actually changes very, very little because you have a shortening on one end and a lengthening on the other. So when those things are happening simultane simultaneously, just say your hamstrings are, instead of doing this, you have a shortening here, but a lengthening here and that's happening simultaneously. So you just have this. So really, your hamstring is not lengthening enough to produce stress on it, and it's not shortening enough to produce stress on it either. So you get very, very little hamstring growth and hamstring strength increases. Now that's the main reason that people who talk about smoking their hamstrings during squats and leg presses are wrong. And that, that's a biomechanical fact. So you really can't get, uh, you can't get around that. You can think about your hamstrings when you're squatting and leg pressing all you want, but mechanically they're just not gonna be working. They're not gonna be getting stressed as much as those quads and glutes. And, and actually that study showed um, that the hamstrings only get recruited about a quarter or 25% as much as the quads during a leg press or a squat. And so the question becomes, how do you work your hamstrings? If squats and leg pressing and compound movements for the lower body of that same nature are not gonna work your hamstrings enough to get them to grow and strengthen, how can you work your hamstrings enough? Now for me, I like to mix up compound hamstring movements with isolation hamstring movements. Isolation hamstring movements are extremely important for really targeting in on those hamstrings. Because there's a lot of different um, compound movements to hit other muscle groups in the body, but the hamstrings are pretty limited, um, and they're limited to movements like Romanian deadlifts, good mornings, hyperextensions, and cable pull-throughs. But even with those exercises, the glutes take a, um, a large beating, and so, the glutes are heavily recruited during all of those exercises as well. And so you don't get any isolation for the hamstrings there. And the hamstrings are, are, are very important to keep strengthened and balanced with the quads, just to keep stress on the knee um, balanced and avoid injury because of that um, unbalanced stress. And so that's why the hamstring curl is extremely important. You don't want to you don't wanna leave that out of your programming. Don't just put the Romanian deadlift in there or the good morning in there and call it good. Definitely put an isolated hamstring curl, a kneeling hamstring curl, a Swiss ball hamstring curl, seated leg curls, or lying leg curls. Those are four great variations. Obviously, 
I prefer um, them all over the Swiss ball leg curl just because I prefer variations that can um, easily have resistance added to them. It's tougher to do that with a Swiss ball leg curl, so I'm a fan of hamstring isolation machines like the seated leg curl, lying leg curl, and kneeling leg curl. But I'm not saying that you should only isolate your hamstrings. You should definitely incorporate compound hamstring movements into your weekly routines as well. And, and like I said, you have the Romanian deadlift, the uh, good morning, the barbell good morning, hyperextensions, cable pull-throughs. Um, those are all excellent compound hamstring movements. So not only does this video teach you how to um, dispel the myth that hamstrings get heavily worked during squatting and leg pressing, um, it also gives you great ideas for training your hamstrings. Now generally, I like to put in um, about an equivalent frequency on hamstring versus quad and glute training. Or actually, I should just say hamstring versus quad training because the glutes really get hit hard during um, compound quad movements and compound hamstring movements. So roughly train your hamstrings and your quads with the same frequency and that's important because you want to maintain that front to back balance for injury prevention of the knee. So you can see that there's, there's really some um, improper information being thrown around out there. And I see that all the time. And, and also, I, you know, I see people believing it. And it's important for me to try and just bring knowledge to you. And I don't want you to fall for Facebook posts stating that if you want to just hit your hamstrings, all you have to do is squat and leg press. Because all that's going to do for you is it's going to cause you to neglect your hamstrings and it's going, it's going to increase your rate of injury at the knee because you're going to be thinking that you're hitting your hamstrings real hard, but you're actually not. So I am here to try to get you to train properly and just to make you smarter in the gym. And that's what it's all about for me, just passing on knowledge from my brain to yours. And uh, if you would like to keep learning from me, just please uh, subscribe to this channel and you can always contact me directly for follow-up questions on any of my videos. You can email me at ryan at growthstimulustraining.com. You can even text me basic questions to 919-671-8585. Or you can always comment on this video or find me on Facebook under Ryan Smith Miller. That's my full name. So I appreciate the views. I hope you have a great um, what's left of your weekend. It's Sunday afternoon. Make the most of your Sunday night. And uh, thank you for watching.